Right, great. Yes, so hello. So I'm Martin, the Head of Department for Languages, Literature and Culture. Uh, I'm a teacher in this department, of course. I teach English Language A-Level and oversee GCSE as well. And I've been at Strode's College for seven years as well, so I know the place pretty well. And yes, I'm just going to go through a few slides, just talk about the department, tell you a little bit about them, and then you can ask any questions at the end. So this department then, involves these particular subjects, as you can see here, the uh, classical civilization, um, the three English subjects, linguistics, the language and literature A-level, the literature A-level, um, the modern foreign languages, French and Spanish, and philosophy as well. So the one I'd like to start with is classical civilization. Now, classical civilization, commonly known as classic and we're one of the few places that actually does this A-level, and we actually have some students who come to Strode's College just because we offer the classics A-level. Um, as you probably imagine, it's the study of ancient Greece and Rome, the classical period, and you would study on this A-level literature, art, politics, philosophy from those two notable periods uh, in history. You don't need to have studied classical civilization GCSE before. I know that there is one, but it's not imperative that you studied the GCSE in order to do the A-level. You just have to be interested in that particular period of history. In terms of some of the, um, the, the literature studied, uh, students study the Odyssey by Homer, um, the Aeneid by Virgil, as for the units, there is a culture and arts module that you would study looking at the imperial image, um, which is the image of Augustus as the first emperor of Rome, and how this image has been manipulated uh, to appeal to Rome and the wider Roman Empire. Um, there is a focus on Greek religion as well, another unit in the works of Socrates. Uh, and then all of the assessment on this particular course is by exam. So you have to be ready to do exams. Um, OCR is the exam board that we study. The other thing that I would say about Classics A-Level is that there is a, a buoyant community around this particular uh, A-Level, perhaps because there, there might be some fear that it would disappear. Um, or it might be forgotten about if new people aren't introduced to it. So there are a lot of people uh, out there who support us in teaching this particular A-level. We get lots of uh, offers of um, lectures, um, uh, visiting lecturers and, and stuff like that from university professors. There are lots of conferences. There are lots of student-friendly exhibitions, things like that. And there are classics, uh, things going on at the British Museum, the Ashmolean Museum in Oxford, which students have looked at virtually, but hopefully we can get back and visit those particular places as well. So our teacher of this A-level, Becky, uh, she's got a lot of contacts as well. Uh, so it's a good one to study with us. So we'll move on then to talk about the three English A-levels. And the one I would like to begin with is linguistics as it says there linguistics is the scientific study of language now linguistics is commonly misunderstood as an a-level because because it is is typically named english language a-level students assume it is an extension of the english language gcse but it is anything but that in fact when we tell students about it, they will frequently say, that's not what I thought it was. Or they might even say, this, this course is a whole lot more interesting than I thought it was going to, to be. And what it is actually about, it's the study of language that we acquire when we are born and how we hear and how we use it on a daily basis, how we develop it, how it varies in terms of how we use uh, language in spoken mode, how we use it in the written mode, how it is originated, how it's changed, those kinds of things. We look at language and gender, we look at language and technology, 
and language used on social media as well. We look at language and power, how it is used in advertising, politics, stuff like that. Very much stuff that you don't do on your English language GCSE. In terms of what we study, no novels, poetry or plays on the linguistics A level. Instead, it's, it's small things, transcripts of parents and children talking, transcripts of reality TV programmes, news and opinion pieces from the media, adverts, political speeches, that kind of thing. So, as I say, it, it's something that is frequently misunderstood. And when you explain it, it, it has a, a broader appeal um, to some students than possibly they would imagine. Um, again, OCR, like all of our English A-levels, OCR is our particular exam board. There are two exams of two and a half hours, and there is some coursework involved as well, a independent language investigation, an extended piece of writing, um, which is a very good preparation, actually, for students at university to do an extended independent project such as that. So that's the linguistics A-level. Uh, the next one I wanted to come to was the language and literature A-level, um, a course uh, that will develop your creativity and expertise by producing your own original writing, um, but also for, for keen readers as well. So it's this kind of hybrid A-level, the best of both worlds, perhaps, in terms of both studying uh, English language and literature, but also developing yourself as a writer. So what does it involve? It involves um, studying prose and drama and poetry. And we look at Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. We look at the Tennessee Williams play Streetcar Named Desire. And we look at Carol Ann Duffy's poetry. But it's not just a literature element, of course. There is also an anthology of spoken language texts. So similar to some of the stuff that is studied on the linguistics A-level as well. Um, and, and again, the anthology includes the study of language used in obituaries, um, in blogs, in interviews, personal letters, diaries and stuff as well. So it's fairly diverse. But then there's also this element of creative writing as well. So whenever students think, I enjoy creative writing, developing my own writing, which is the A-level for me. It is very much this one. They have to do some uh, imaginative writing and then write a critical analysis of it as well. Uh, three exams for this particular A-level and two pieces of coursework are involved in this one. So you have to be good at exams, but also good at working independently on coursework as well. And again, yeah. And then the third one is English Literature A-Level. Now again, students who choose this, they know what this one is about. They'll have obviously done well on their English Literature GCSE, perhaps had a preference for their English Literature GCSE over their English language one. And they, of course, will be keen readers and ready for some more challenging material than what they've done already on GCSE. As you can see from that picture there, um, there is a Shakespeare play that we study, Twelfth Night. We also uh, do Christina Rossetti as our chosen poet. And we also choose to look at the Gothic genre and study Mary Shelley's Frankenstein and Bram Stoker's Dracula as well. Study all of those texts, but also um, look at critical opinion and engage in critical analysis and theory of literature as well and thinking about the historical context, the social context and how that impacts language as well. As you can imagine, it's an essay based subject, so you have to be very good at writing essays, be able to write fluently and coherently, all different types of essays, two exams, one piece of coursework, and as I say, once again, uh, the exam board is OCR, so if you are a keen reader, passionate about literature and some of those uh, things and literature across 400 years, then that would be the only level for you. Um, I might anticipate perhaps some of the questions that we might get before in terms of the A-levels, but what we're often asked is, um, can you study a couple of, of these? 
um, together. You can do the English Literature A-Level and the Linguistics A-Level, both, both of those. In fact, I remember many years ago doing those as my A-Level choices um, myself. But if you do the Language and Literature A-Level, well, you wouldn't do either of the other English ones. Um, the Linguistics A-Level is, is a good choice when it is paired up with psychology and sociology, particularly. Um, literature and language is commonly studied alongside history and uh, politics. Again, literature being a discursive A-Level, writing, discussion, essays. You perhaps do something like history as well. But there are many combinations. Right, so that's our, our three English uh, A levels. Foreign language department as well, beginning with French. Now, French, French A level. Um, there's an equal weighting for French A level in terms of developing the reading, writing, listening, and speaking skills of the student in this subject. Um, in terms of the speaking element, students get the opportunity to independently research a cultural topic of their own and then give a presentation in French, of course, on that particular uh, subject choice. So what we've had students do in the past are things like the, the Charlie Hebdo controversy uh, from a few years ago. One of our students did a presentation on that, the works of, of Monet, the art of parkour, just, just things connected to French culture and French uh, social life, research it and then do a presentation on it. In fact, the whole course, in terms of learning the language, it is built around the, the cultural topics um, of French society, of family, technology, artistic heritage, music, cinema, society, social issues. I mean, really, the student is learning as much about France and, and French culture and life as they are about the language as well. So it, it's a lovely A-level in terms of how it is set up. Um, there is also the study of the language within the context of a fictional narrative. So some literary study as well. They look at the novel uh, No Emoir, and in terms of a film, the one we choose to study is the black and white drama from the 90s, La Haine, as well. In addition to their lessons, the students get one-to-one um, -one support with their language development and small group conversations as well. And the final thing I would say about just French on its, on its own, it, it's equally suited to, to non-native speakers and native speakers as well. Now, if I just go to Spanish, okay. similar comments then, because again, our Spanish A-level is following the AQA uh, specification. It's set up in, in, in the same way where you learn all about Spanish culture and engage with uh, Spanish social affairs and do a very similar presentation there. Again, there is a novel to study uh, and we study La Casa by Bernarda Alba. Uh, and there is, a, there is a film that we study as well, Volver is the film that we choose to study. And again, if I go back to those research projects, previously students have done um, presentations on the Spanish Civil War, on the works of Salvador Dali, on um, bullfighting, the traditions of, of bullfighting um, and, and opposition to, to bullfighting in Spain, those kinds of things. So yes, yes, they learn the language, they develop the language and become fluent speakers of an additional language, but they also learn plenty about uh, the culture as well. Final thing I was just going to say about French and uh, Spanish A level is that for these A levels, we, we would traditionally have a uh, fewer number of, of students. The number in our classes for the modern foreign languages A levels varies from six to 16. Um, but, but numbers are, are fairly steady, and I would say that universities still very much. Uh, value having language students 
and we, and we run certain trips. We go up to the British Film Institute for both the Spanish and French A level. Haven't been able to in the last 12 months, of course, but we have done some um, online things and had uh, guest speakers um, doing little um, sort of projects and, and, and cultural discussions of French and Spanish as well. We've even had some former students who were doing Spanish and French um, degrees come back and speak to some of our students those kind of things and we haven't been able to do a, a trip overseas for for uh, in the last 12 months but we would like to do that um again and we have done in the past right i could move on next to oops if we could move on next to philosophy which is the final a level in this particular department again now philosophy um we we get high numbers for this and we've, we've just opened up this course at Windsor as well because this is a very uh, popular A level. Again I think there is a GCSE in this but you don't need to have studied the GCSE in order to do it. We study the AQ, uh, AQA specification for A level philosophy uh, taught by our philosophy expert Alistair and just a few things that are studied here. They do a unit on epistemology, the study of knowledge where you engage with questions like what is knowledge? Moral philosophy is another unit as well, where students engage in discussions of, of right and wrong and consider moral ambiguity and stuff like that. In the second year, they look at the metaphysics of God, um, the existence, the nature of God, and the metaphysics of the mind is another module as well. It seeks to answer questions about the nature of the mind, such as is our mind different from our body and lots of those profound philosophical questions that the students on that course like to discuss and talk about. Now the course looks at different philosophers and different methods of analysis such as conceptual analysis and argumentation but what we say to students doing this course is that they need to yes they can be open uh, they can be opinionated but they need to be open-minded as well and what they particularly learn on this course is about a logical mode of thinking okay um, in being able to construct arguments logical arguments we often say that a good maths brain is useful here this idea of logic and constructing a logical argument for something great you know cognitive development this particular a level uh, cognitive development that's very useful of course at university and if I just go back to the to the idea about maths there that's why we ask for a grade five as a minimum in a maths GCSE it supports the subject as well so they are the subjects um, in this particular department doing the subjects of the modern foreign languages classics and philosophy as well we'll have a look at destinations for the students studying these particular subjects. They go all, you know, far and wide here. You can see a, a picture there of, of Tom, Tom Darcy, who did English literature and classics with us, us just last year and is now studying classics at Oxford. But of course, we have students go to any number of, of universities, Russell Group universities, students that I've taught just recently who are now studying at Cardiff, Exeter, it's on that caption, but Birmingham as well, those kinds of places. They are far and wide. And a couple of other things I just wanted to talk about before I take any questions is just to say a little bit about the college. As I say, I have been here seven, uh, seven years now. And what I would say is a sixth form college is a great step to make when you are 16. It's kind of just moving away from, a, a, I suppose, a more institutionalized experience in education, like a school can be. And I've taught in schools prior to being in sixth form college. And I suppose it's a little bit of a flavor of university. Um, a lot of our students come here and they don't have any friends or they don't have many friends, but they soon make them. No one on our site, of course, is younger than 16. So if you're in a school sixth form, you've got all of those younger 
children there as well. But I suppose this is a more mature uh, environment, which the students like very much. Um, but I would also say that it's not hands off like a university is a sixth form college. Um, we don't expect students to be fully independent as they might be when they go to university. We are always close at hand. We are passionate about our subjects, but it's not always just left to them. It is down to them. We chase them up. We chase attendance. You know, we, um, you know, we set homework, make sure it is done, contact um, parents and carers. Um, perhaps when it's necessary. And so it's that kind of halfway house. They have some freedoms, of course, the dress code is relaxed. They can call their teachers by their first names. Um, but in terms of behavior and expectations, it is very much like a school would be. Um, diversity and inclusion is central to the college uh, philosophy. And lots is done inside and outside of lessons to promote diversity and difference. Um, and there, there is lots for students to get involved in, in these particular areas. And what else, what else would I like to say? The other thing, of course, that they are getting here in all of uh, these subjects are A-level specialists, okay? So I, for example, just teach uh, English, uh, the linguistics A level. That's what I, you know, focus on as my main subject. Expert in that. Becky uh, is a dedicated teacher of classics. Alistair of philosophy. Joe and Elaine of Spanish and French, and then teachers who have been teaching English literature A level for many years. We don't sort of do key stage three and GCSE we are A-level specialists. So you get some A-level specialism um, here as well. Right. Okay. Um, a little bit there about college life. I mentioned some of the trips and visits um, before. A lot of it has been virtual just recently, but when we can get out there again for these subjects, we will always go up to Globe Theatre to see what they have on for English literature and we have previously for language and literature. I mentioned before the British Library, the British Museum, well placed of course to go to all of those places and we have guest speakers and we have former students who come back and visit us as well. In terms of clubs and societies, we have a Latin club that runs at lunchtime um, by Becky as well, uh, which is popular with her classic students, but also with some of my linguistic students as well. We hold uh, competitions um, and, and writing competitions and, and stuff like that, and a few other things besides. So students don't just come to their lessons, but can get involved in extracurricular activities as well. Right, okay, my short presentation. Um, are there any questions at all that anyone might have about any of those things? Thanks, Martin. Yes, we do. I've been, I've been sending you little messages because when you move your papers, we can't hear you, it makes a big noise. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, sorry. That's okay. Yeah, I've got a few questions. Um, so is it possible to take A-level linguistics and A-level literature alongside each other? Yes, you can do um, both of those. As I say, that was something that I did um, when I was 16. You can do both of those. You can do both of those if you're particularly good at that English and there is enough diversity in those two courses. You wouldn't do language and literature and then any other English A-level though. Okay, thank you. Um, do we do students have to buy their own texts and, and do you get information about which editions, etc? You do, yes. So they do need to buy their own texts. We will give a, uh, a recommended edition for the one uh, for the one that we are studying. We don't, you know, we go for a relatively cheaper one. And of course, there are always second hand uh, texts that they can get their hands on as well. And also there is support for any of the materials that are needed for any of the courses. Um, there is financial support to, to help students access and buy those for themselves as well. That's great. Um, 
Another question, if I'm interested in journalism, which of the English A-levels should I take? <clears throat> if you're interested in journalism, all of them would be, would be useful. Um, I'm just thinking the language and literature one, the language and literature one, you are developing writing and writing um, skills through your imaginative writing. So that one would be, would be useful, I think. For the literature one, writing all of those essays, getting feedback on that, that would be useful as well. But I guess the linguistics one, when I'm thinking about linguistics and what's studied on there, where you've got a unit called language in the media and you are looking at how texts are constructed in the media and, and how we deconstruct them as we study them, I would say that the linguistics A-level particularly is useful for a career in journal journalism because you are studying very closely how journalists write um, as per their audience, what we call the production and the reception of the text. All of them would be useful, but I think the linguistics A-level would be particularly useful. Great, thank you. Um, another question, what subjects go well with philosophy? What subjects go well with philosophy? Um, <clears throat> so as I say, if you study philosophy A-level, it, it wouldn't surprise me that you also did um, maths A-level. And so we have students who might do maths, might even do a science and might do philosophy as well. Um, so, so that's common. But otherwise, yeah, you also see philosophy paired up with, with history. Uh, you might see philosophy paired up with politics. And of course, we have some students who do the English subjects and philosophy as well. So philosophy is quite diverse in terms of some of the ones you would expect, but also you see philosophy with sciences and with maths as well. OK, that's great. Thank you. Um, how much independent study will I be expected to complete each week? Well, we would um, set up to five hours. Um, there is up to five hours per subject per week. So if you've got your, if you're thinking about your, your full time table doing three subjects, that would be 13 and a half hours in the classroom. You've got three lessons of 90 minutes. So I think doing my maths, that adds up to four and a half hours per subject, 13 and a half hours in the classroom, and then five hours per subject per week, that would be 28 and a half hours. Of course, it varies from week to week, but a student can expect to have up to five hours uh, per subject per week, which, you know, then gets them to organise their time, work out when they need to do things, get used to deadlines, all of which is going to be useful if they are then going on to, to university. So up to five hours of independent study per week for a subject. Okay, um, is it possible to take classics and history? You certainly can do classics and history. Um, there are two history A-levels, aren't there? There's the, the, the modern history focusing on the 20th uh, century. The early modern history, which I think is the, the 15th, 16th, 17th century period. And then of course, classics takes us way back to, to ancient Greece and Rome. So there's no crossover there at all. You could take a history A-level and very happily take classics A-level as well. Okay, um, just checking any other questions. Um, can I take French and Spanish together? You can take French and Spanish together. Yeah, we get, you know, a, a pure linguist. Um, we have students who have done, who, who have done that actually. Um, we have one just, just last year who did a French and Spanish A-level. Uh, she was a native Spanish speaker, um, but, but just really enjoyed that, really enjoys doing languages, wanted to work in business, and become a trans, uh, you know, translator. Wanted to work through, through Europe. So I guess, um, yeah, would would be um, multilingual, actually. So you can certainly do both of those uh, languages. 
Okay, that's great. So just a little last shout out for any other questions that you may have. Um, I think we've probably come to the end of, of the list of questions. Um, so thanks very much, Martin, for that um, presentation. Okay. Um, this is recorded, so we will send this out by email to um, everybody who's joined us this afternoon. Um, I don't know if you could just click on that slide one more to the next one, to the final one, uh, yeah. which has got some information about how to apply. So if you yes. haven't applied yet, please do. Um, we're interviewing um, uh, frequently, um, remotely, mainly by telephone. Um, so once we get your application through, we'll confirm uh, receipt and then we will arrange an interview for you. Um, there's the contact details there for the admissions team. So if you've got any questions, please contact them on those numbers. If you want to take a quick snap of that screen, that might be helpful. Um, otherwise, um, I think that's it for today. Thank you, Martin. I don't know if you have anything else to wrap up with. No, no, that's that's fine. Yeah, hopefully uh, that, that was useful. Sorry about the, the paper, if there wasn't anything that you could hear, you know, um, but, but no, hopefully um, the information is what you wanted to hear. Great. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody, for joining us this afternoon. Yeah, yep. thank you. Thank you.